Hello and welcome back to Football Daily, where, with the season well and truly underway, we've decided to profile 10 teams that could struggle this season. This script was written by me, so direct all hate to my Twitter. Let's get started. 10. Lazio This one might seem like a strange one. After all, Lazio demolished Sampdoria in their opening game, comfortably winning 3-0 away from home. But our fears stem from the summer recruitment of their rivals for Champions League qualification, Roma and AC Milan. They have spent a combined £180 million on players including Rafa Liao, Kessier, Diawara and Brian Cristante. Whilst Lazio, who finished a distant seven points off Roma and a further two off Milan, have forked out just £35.5 million. Whilst we applaud their ability to keep hold of in-demand players like Milinkovic, Savic and Correa, Lazio fans will be disappointed that their only major arrivals were those of Manuel Lazari and Denis Vavro. And it's not like these players were exactly pulling up trees last campaign either. 23-year-old centre-back Vavro made just 1.1 tackles and interceptions per 90 in last season's Europa League with a paltry 38% tackle success rate. Meanwhile, 25-year-old Manuel Azzari may have finished with 8 assists to his name, but he overperformed his expected assist per 90 ratio of 0.18, the 45th best in Italy. This isn't the sort of recruitment necessary to improve on their 8th place finish from 1819. 9. Marseille Unlike in the case of Lazio, our worries about Marseille stem from what has been a summer of great upheaval in southern France. But before we get stuck into what's been going on, a quick reminder to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell to never miss a video. The 2018-19 season was simply not a good one for Marseille. Not only did they lose to a fourth-tier side in the Coupe de France, but their 13 league on defeats has only been topped three times this century. Over-reliant on Florian Tovan, their only player to get into double figures for goals in all competitions, and with a leaky defence that conceded 52 league goals, the seventh worst record in the division, it was a recipe for disaster. It was no surprise that with fans up in arms, Rudy Garcia was fired and replaced by Andre Villas-Boas, returning to the top five leagues of European football for the first time since December 2013. But having missed out on Champions League football for the sixth consecutive season, despite having spent close to 200 million euros in the four years since Frank McCourt's takeover, funds have been tight this summer, with just 12.6 million spent so far. Unless Marseille find the suitors they desperately want for Sanson and Tovan before the window slams shut and immediately reinvest wisely, Lom looks set for a season of struggle. 8. Eintracht Frankfurt There are very few sides in world football, if any, who could cope with the loss of two strikers who scored 45 goals between them last season. But Frankfurt's use of the £99 million made through the sales of Jovic and Haller has been uninspired to say the least. Only one player, 26-year-old defender Martin Hederegger, has been brought in for over £10 million, and their forward replacements in Bastos and Dejan Lovelzic have a lot of pressure riding on them. Dutch striker Dos may have scored 76 goals in 84 Liga Nos games over the last three seasons, but he's 30 and only hit double figures in the league in one of his four seasons with Wolfsburg between 2012 and 2016. At the opposite end of the experience scale is Lovelzic, who, whilst touted for years as a potential star of Serbian football, only has one season of regular first-team football under his belt. Whilst we back the excellent Adi Huta, the fact remains that after being fourth in early April, they limped to seventh last campaign, and come into this one with a far worse squad. 7. Hoffenheim In fairness to Hoffenheim, they actually haven't started the season too badly, with a 1-0 defeat to Frankfurt followed by a 3-2 victory over Bremen. But the truth remains that Alfred Schroeder, in his first management role for four years and just his second overall, has an enormous task in replicating Nagelsmann's success in Western Germany. After all, his predecessor somehow managed to lead the side to two top four finishes in three years despite making a net £52 million profit on transfers. Whilst Emma Bay, Joe Linton and Schultz have some way to go to match players that have previously left Hoffenheim and Firmino, Volland and Sula, it's hard to imagine them improving having made a £70 million profit this summer. There is some excitement over their replacements though. Elas Bebo appears to be a very promising player, having operated at 0.5 expected goals and assists per 90 last term at Hanover, whilst £9 million recruit Robert Skov comes highly recommended. It's not difficult to see why either, with the 23-year-old Dane contributing 42 goals in 48 games for Copenhagen last term. Schroeder needs Skov to get somewhere near that form for Hoffenheim to stay mid-table. 6. Espanyol it's been a disastrous summer for Espanyol. In early June, their manager Ruby left for Real Betis after just one year at the helm, in which Los Periquitos finished seventh, their best for 14 years. In his place, David Gallego was promoted from the B team, where he won just 42% of his games last season. As if that wasn't bad enough, Borja Iglesias, score of 17 league goals last season, over four times as many as anyone else, 
followed Ruby to Batiste in a £25 million deal. They have thus far struggled to bring in a replacement, whilst also losing defensive linchpin Mario Hermoso to Atletico Madrid. The former Real Madrid academy member was responsible for progressing play, with no outfield player topping his 4.9 completed long balls per game. Having had the 8th worst record for expected goals against in 1819, the Espanyol faithful are praying his replacement Fernando Solero hits the ground running. That's a lot of pressure for a 23-year-old who has just one year of top-flight football to his name, a year in which his Real Valladolid team only avoided relegation by four points. With problems at both ends, 1920 could be very bleak viewing for Espanyol fans. 5. Watford Whilst West Ham and Leicester City, two sides that finished just two points ahead of Watford last season, splashed out £167 million on players of the quality of Sebastian Haller, Pablo Fornals and Yuri Tielemans, the Hornets had a very quiet window. With just a few hours to go until the deadline, Watford had spent just over £7 million on West Brom centre-half Craig Dawson and 17-year-old Fluminese forward João Pedro, who isn't set to join until January. But as the deadline struck, they managed to get a £27 million deal for 21-year-old Ren Winger Ismail Assar over the line. After contributing 14 league on goals last term and operating at 0.4 expected goals and assists per 90, only bettered by four Watford players last term, he is set to be a useful addition. But with Saar not yet fit enough to play more than 16 Premier League minutes, Watford have started in disastrous fashion. Three games, three defeats, one goal, seven against and Troy Deeney contributor of 14 league goals in 18-19 out for an unspecified amount of time. With games against Arsenal, Arsenal, Man City and Wolves in the next four fixtures, Watford risk being cut adrift before October. 4. Crystal Palace Despite achieving a first victory at Old Trafford since 1989, just three Premier League games into the season, it seems like Crystal Palace may well be threatened by relegation. As it stands, they have a combined expected goals of just 1.8, the lowest in the division, and an expected goals against of 5.3 only topped by Villa and Bournemouth. Their current roster of strikers Benteke, Ayu and Wickham have scored just 8 goals in their last 85 Premier League appearances dating back to the start of 1617. This puts enormous pressure once again on Zaha, who seems to be struggling following the collapse of his proposed transfers to Arsenal and Everton. Whilst his completed take-ons per 90 remain exceptional at 4.4, his shots have dropped from 2.2 to 1.8 and its key passes have collapsed to 0.4 per 90, which is worryingly still good enough for 6th in Roy Hodgson's squad. And having been awarded 11 penalties in 18-19, second only to Man United, and having scored 10 of them or 20% of their league goals, they will once again be overly reliant on set pieces and their star player this term. 3. PSV PSV lost just three league games in 18-19, the fewest in the Eredivisie, and scored 11 more goals and conceded 13 fewer than the previous campaign in which they were crowned champions. But yet, despite finishing with a plus 72 goal difference, the same as Man City despite playing four fewer games, they were pipped to the title by an exceptional Ajax side by three points. But this summer has been a disaster for Van Bommel. Angelino has returned to Man City after assisting nine league goals in 18-19, only topped by Bergvine, whilst De Jong and Lozano both left for Sevilla and Napoli respectively for a combined £45 million. Pounds. In De Jong, they have lost a proven goalscorer who scored 112 goals in 204 games for the club, including 28 in the Eredivisie last season, and Lozano who contributed a further 25. And who have they brought in to replace the players who were directly involved in 60% of their league goals in 18-19? Kostas Mitroglou and Rizzo Duan. Mitroglou, best remembered for a horror spell at Fulham five years ago, is 31 and has scored 13 league goals in the three seasons since leaving Benfica. And whilst 21-year-old Japanese midfielder Ritsu Duan is promising, the former Groningen man is nowhere near Lozano levels yet. Without serious investment prior to the Monday deadline, it's hard to see them replicating their success from last term. 2. Monaco Coming off the back of five consecutive top three finishes, which included a league title and a run to the Champions League semi-finals, 18-19 was an unmitigated disaster for Monaco. They were a mess defensively and ended up conceding 57 league goals, their most for 43 years and finished with just 36 points from 38 games, two points clear of the relegation playoff place. But their decision making this summer has been haphazard to say the least. Right back Sadibi, who played the fifth most minutes last term, was loaned to Everton. Tielemans was sold for a very reasonable £40 million. And Ronnie Lopez, who has contributed 24 league goals over the last two campaigns, second only to Falcao, joined Sevilla for £22.5 million. In their place, they brought in Gelson Martins for £27 million, the fourth highest fee in their history, and Ben Yadere. And whilst we rate the former severe man in a certain system, he's always been a penalty error specialist, with 0.5 shots per 90 from inside the six-yard box, only topped by three players in Spain in 1819. 
Without their top creator and Lopez in the side, we worry about his service and Monaco's future. 1. Chelsea It was almost inevitable that Chelsea would have a drop off this season. Coming off the back of a third place finish in a Europa League triumph, they swapped Sarri, who had been managing at the sharp end of European football for four years, for Frank Lampard 12 months into his managerial career. Not able to sign anyone other than Kovacic due to their two window ban, and having lost Talisman Eden Hazard, the Blues' top scorer, a sister, second best creator, and best dribbler, Lampard immediately put his faith in youth. And so far, he has been been rewarded, at least in an attacking sense, with only Man City topping his side's 18.3 shots per game and 6.7 shots on target per game. But having sold Gary Cahill and David Luiz with a combined age of 65, in favour of reintegrating the younger Christensen and Zuma, the results have been mixed. Seven goals conceded in their opening three games, a figure only topped by Norwich, suggests there may well be some teething problems. Unless Chelsea arrest this surprising defensive slump, which has seen them have the eighth worst record according to expected goals, by the time Rudiger is back in mid-September, their top four hopes could all be over. So that was our list of 10 teams that are set to struggle in 1920. What did you guys think of the list? Did I miss anyone out? Did I include someone unnecessarily? Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you next time.